cool, cool, cool. I'm waiting to share. So, I think it's important now. So just let me know whenever you're ready. My okay. Brother. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. So you, my brother, you're going to start it up? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gonna, so. Oh, oh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. So what's going on? What's going on, people? It's your main man, everything by John. If you don't know my, uh, don't know me by now, my name is John and I do everything. That's the name. So right now, we're looking at directly, this is the first episode of my podcast. Um, I think unofficially the name of it is going to be the Everything by John podcast. So I kind of wanted to create a platform where uh, most of the time you see me, you know, just doing my videos, but kind of wanted to create a platform and a podcast where I bring uh, people that's really doing what they have to do in their own career, their own community, and give them the platform to talk about what's going on and future endeavors and everything like that. So if you can look to the left or the right of me, depending on your, your circumstance, I got my main man, somebody who uh, I was kind of basically already having conversations like this off camera every single time we talk. It's almost like, man, we could change the world. I got my guy, Ed. Hey, say what up to the people, man. Say what up to the people. What's going on, bro? Hey, man, I appreciate you having me coming on, man. For real, man. It's super, super my pleasure to be on to the brand new podcast, bro. So, yeah, man, I'm pumped for this, bro. I'm definitely pumped for this. Man, this is my guy. And I'm telling you, you know, we've met um, uh, uh, from the circumstance of me literally finding him on YouTube. So, Whatever little intricacies he does, and he's such a he's a tech guy. He's you know we're gonna talk about everything he gets into in terms of real estate and everything like that. But I literally found him through YouTube, so he knows enough of the algorithm that I actually found him. Just like a lot of people found him and listened to his podcast, listen to his YouTube channel. So just off of that right there, you guys out there, it should be a lesson for you to really get your technology game up, man. Because when it comes to uh, finding people and um just really kind of upping your game and whatever you're doing if you have that technology game down pack and it doesn't have to be you necessarily you can hire people just like my guy ed um we're gonna put all the contact links and everything in the descriptions and everything like that below but that's how i found them you see what i'm saying so it's almost like an online meeting or online meetup so this is how you gain business and things like that but we're gonna get into all of that so my guy ed i want to really take it back a little bit um, I don't know if you've been um, interviewed in a way where it's like almost like Vlad TV. Well, not Vlad TV. Man. We're not even gonna say that. Yeah, <laughs> just take. Down, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just want to. I just want to take it back into um, just like your, your your upbringing. You know, tell everybody where you're from and how it was growing up, and what it kind of what kind of got you into your first uh, endeavor, which was if I if I if I'm not mistaken, real estate. Yeah, yeah, man. Great question, man. So, you know, I'm, you know, I'm from the suburbs of Chicago, I guess you can say. Like, I was actually, like, born and raised in the suburbs. And, um, you know, I, I come from a, an extremely, like, supportive family. So, you know, I'm super blessed in that way. I'm the youngest of eight siblings, you know, so I'm the baby and I'm 30, you know. So, <laughs> you know, so um, my my brothers and sisters have always kind of been like fathers and mothers to me, you know? So, mm. so when I was growing up, like my pops was like my rock, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like he was like my superhero, like the person I really, really leaned on, you know? Mm. And like, you know, him and my mom always told me, Hey, you know, you could do anything you put your mind to, you know, I've always been like extremely intelligent and stuff like that. At least that's what they told me. So it's like, I <laughs> believe that, right. It's like, I believe yeah, yeah, the yeah. story that they were implanting into me. Like okay. you are really smart. Like you're special. You like, I just really believe that type of stuff. Cause I always heard it's like, it was force feeding me this, this, this like, uh, like, I guess a way of thinking about myself, you know, like they were creating a story for me to a certain degree. And long story short, though, it's like my, my pops ended up passing away when I was 12, you mm -hmm. know, so so literally like six days before my 13th birthday, right before I became a teen, he passed away, you know, mm -hmm. so it's like I went from the suburbs of Chicago, or whatever, to another suburb in like a brand new school. Mm -hmm. And like, I was actually we was kind of living in like, I guess like now it's kind of like the hood, you know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. it didn't feel like that. It was a lot of black home ownership in the area where I grew up at or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, but like, by the time I was getting ready to go to high school, the high school that I would have went to ended up 
uh, like going through bankruptcy. Like literally the high school, the whole township was in bankruptcy. So like they ended up like combining all of their sports into just like district 205 football team. And that, it was three different high schools in this district. So I would have ended up going there had my pops actually stayed alive, which is crazy. But then when he passed, I ended up moving out to Justice, Illinois. And I ended up going to a school that literally had just built a $3 million field house as like an addition. So I went to a rich school with all different types of races. Like before I, like before my pops passed away and I went to this high school, I was only going to school like all black folks. I saw like two white people, literally my entire upbringing. I was only in class with like one white person, maybe two in my entire life. Wow. Yeah, I went to the school that was like the most interracial school that you could possibly imagine. And I got to meet different cultures and hang out with different people. One of my best friends was like this, uh, like my sister, uh, like when my sister saw her yearbook photo, she was like, yeah, she looked like she about to go bake some cookies. Like, <laughs> like, like, my, like one of my best right. friends I was like this, you know, easy bake muffin looking white girl or whatever. You know wow, what I'm saying? Wow, so yeah, like, yeah, I really yeah. got to experience a lot of things because wow. of that. Long story short, just to kind of fast forward the story, you know, when I went to college, I ended up coming across this guy in like one of my psychology classes, actually, I'm a psychology major. And I came mm. across this guy who was like, yeah, you know, we end up having to like walk these papers over to some office. And he was like, yeah, you know, are you interested in an opportunity to, you know, not have to work? And I was like, yes, that's like exactly yeah. what I want. And long story short, that was like an actual, um, that was a guy, he was like, uh, he was working with Amway Global. And, mm. and, and like, for some people that may not know what Amway Global is, like a company, they sell stuff. It's like one mm. of those uh, multi-level marketing sales companies. Mm. So right. but working with those individuals there is where I really started to like mold myself as like an entrepreneur, essentially. I mm. realized that it was possible. Those people, they were, you know, despite however they were getting it, they were getting like, you know, $60,000, $100,000 a year, like helping other people make money. Right. And it was just so fascinating to me, you know? So I ended up like learning so much, read so many books, learned from these rich white guys, to be honest. Like that was the majority of y'all. I was learning from rich white guys. And like they put me on all the books, all the knowledge, all of the you know, understanding that I needed to really kind of mold myself out here. So I ended up getting into, I went through so much stuff, but like I ended up working as a CNA, literally wiping asses for a living. Literally I know, wiping yeah, asses. Yeah, yeah, I know that ground. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. And like, I was working with all of these elderly people, you know, I'm helping people, da, da, da. I'm going from job to job. And long story short this lady that i was working for she ended up getting sick well not getting sick she was getting better i should say she was already sick she had stage four cancer but she started oh. getting better and she was getting ready to go home so i was working at a rehab place right so at this time so she asked me if i would be her at home caregiver so i agreed i'm like hell yeah you know i'll take that because she was paying me under the table more money okay. than what my job was paying me through a check so i was like yeah you know i'll definitely take that i was like you know what i'm gonna make a whole business around this I'm literally going to start a home health care company to make sure that I can not only have her, but I can get other clients as well, right? Like that was, that's what the plan was. It didn't end up working out like that. Right around yeah. that same time though, like literally like within three days plus or minus from the time that that lady asked me to be her at home caregiver, I had just found out about wholesaling. So, you know, I'm learning all of this stuff, right? Like I'm taking this stuff in. I power learn stuff. Like when I learn, I want to learn it all real fast. I've taken like right. three courses this year already. Like I mm. power learn. I took the whole course right. in two days. So, right. so <laughs> everything about wholesaling, this lady, everything was going good. The first day though, she ended up falling. And you know, when you old, you got cancer, you fall. It's like, it's just like the beginning of the end, essentially. So mm. she came home yeah. first day, failed. Ended up going to the hospital, came back. She was messed up, like once again, just like she was up in the nursing home, but I had to take care of her. <coughs> Excuse me, woo. Yeah. Oh, quit playing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah. people, looking, people looking at their uh, at the screens and taking, <laughs> taking speakers yeah. out their ears. I'm like, oh, yeah, God. No. <laughs> my bad, my bad. But, yeah. I'm going to speed up the story real, real quick, though. So, yeah, yeah. 
long story short, like she ended up passing away though. Oh, like wow, 17 wow. days into me working for her. So sad. She was a real nice person or whatever, but uh, she ended up passing away. So it was pretty much like wholesaling was all I had. Like I literally quit my job on bad terms to go work mm. for this lady. Mm-hmm. You know, like, like it was, mm-hmm. it was real sketchy. Like when she was yeah. leaving, she was trying to like tell me whether I was going to be working or not. So I didn't give my job a full two week notice. They didn't want me back once she mm. passed away. And mm. it was like, okay, well, I'm either going to figure out this wholesale and stuff, or I'm just going to end up being homeless because I'm damn sure not going back to no other. Mm. I didn't want to be a TNA no more. Mm. And I was already on that path. No, I was betting on me trying to right. do the home health care situation with that right. lady. Right, right. But when she passed away, it was like, what am I going to do now? Because I'm not trying to go back to no job. Right. So I ended up like, really getting into this wholesale and stuff. I ended up putting out a, a Google ad for $8 a day, just like, okay, hopefully this works type stuff. Set up a little website or whatever. And about like seven days after setting up that Google ad, I ended up getting my very first phone call from it. That person ended up, long story short, ended up being my very first deal. $8,000 deal. It was a probate deal. Like, they needed help. It was like this extra hood, dude. He was like, yo, yeah, I just got out the pen. Da, 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 da. <laughs> you know, I found you on Google. I'm like, damn, hey, you probably wow. don't. He just like, this is like one of his first time seeing Google. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was like, yeah. it got out the for like 10 years, something like that. So, damn. You know, so it was crazy, yeah, and like, yeah, so it was a long story, but we ended up getting that deal closed. That's kind of how I got into it, though. That's a little bit more about me. I know that was wow. like the, that was like the long version, one the cliff notes wow, version. No, nah, no, nah, that's beautiful, beautiful. I mean, but but look, look how you, <laughs> but look how you just, uh, you know, from your upbringing, you know, having that strong support system all the way to the point where, you know, somewhere along the way, you kind of develop that psychological. Um, mindset as well, you know, and it can, and then you infuse that with, you know, probably some way through college or just, you know, just learning through life throughout, you know, your, your communities and neighborhoods, you start developing that business acumen. So all of those things started coming together at the point where it's like, even when you became a, um, you know, got into the, 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 you know, lower healthcare field, the first thing you thought about was a business out of it. You know what I'm saying? So when you, when you find out about wholesaling a little bit after, it's like, this is already something I can create a business out of. This is the, you know, this, this previous hustle was not working out for me and you jump right into the game and look, it showed, it showed who you were right there. When you close the deal right away, your first deal, $8,000, man. Yeah, man. It was a game changer. I probably should have mentioned too, like my pops was a, 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 a like a thoroughbred entrepreneur too. Mm. I probably should have mentioned that, you know, like he was like my hero wow. or whatever, but wow, he wow. owned his own pest control company. He mm. called it Full Force Pest Control. And my mom mm. helped him think of the slogan for the company. It was like, got a pest, call less. You know, mm. so it was like, so, so, you know, like my whole life, I'm going on pest control emissions with him. It's literally like yeah. an eight-year-old. He's like, yeah, yeah, boy, wow. get up in that crawl space. Go put this yeah. mouse trap up in there. I'm like, oh, no. He's like, yeah, go on yeah, in. Yeah. <laughs> I swear to God, he was you up. up. And it was like yeah. terrifying, but I got taught to face my fears mm-hmm. that I can do anything that like, if you want money, you got to go out here and work for it. all of that stuff was instilled into mm-hmm. me like over and over and mm-hmm. over again as a little kid. Mm-hmm. So weird. Man, you know, it's, it's, it's actually funny because we actually have a similar, um, somewhat similar background and story, man. Cause it's funny. Cause when you just, when you just real, when you just said that, I'm like, hold on. Cause my pops, you know what I'm saying? It's like the timeline is kind of similar. Cause my pops, um, cause my parents are actually from Haiti. You know what I'm saying? And and my father, he actually had a store, a general store, and like way back in the days, like you know, in, in Haiti, like when I used to go there all the time when I was little, and he used to he used to make me help out and all of that. Like so, he was a serial entrepreneur. He actually had another store like right across the street with my name on it. It said John on it. You know what I'm saying? But my mom's, yeah, my mom's here. In America, she she like kind of she kind of hid me from all of that, like because when I became like when I was twelve or eleven, I think like like eleven really, like how your 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 pops unfortunately passed. My pops, that was the last time I seen him when I was like eleven, twelve. You know what I'm saying? Like eleven. You know what I'm saying? He he went back to somewhere. I think he went to like different other countries and like you know doing his doing his thing. Like they you know they broke they broke up or whatever. So the right. timeline is funny for me. You know what I'm saying I'm like yo, you 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 making me reminisce about my own childhood. You know what I'm saying? And, and, you know, me coming from New York, 
yeah, me coming from New York, either way, you know, of course we have like all, all the cultures, all the, you know, the mm-hmm. different, you know, races and, and everything, you know what I'm saying? So I, that was, that was natural for me, but I'm like, wow. So I didn't even know I had the entrepreneurship in me until I got like a little bit older, you know what I'm saying? But for me, it was almost like, it was almost like, I felt like I was, um, I felt like I was alerted to a job anyway, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because when I was like, when I was like 17, yeah, when I was like 17, 18, I used to literally get up and go to the city with like a hundred copies of my resume and just hand it out, hand it out, hand it out, hand it out. Mm-hmm. And I never really got none. I never really got no experience, no, no, um, no responses like that. You know what I'm saying? My first legal job was when I was like 22, 23. You know what I'm saying? And I was working with uh, little kids as a, uh, as a paraprofessional or like assistant teacher with like uh, kids with uh, special needs and special attention. Uh-huh. So our timeline is kind of similar because when I was like 23, that's when I found out about host. I mean, well, I found out a little bit earlier, but when I really got back into it, um, I kind of tried to do it again. And then that's when I became an agent. You know what I'm saying? Because I thought that it wasn't going to work for me, you know, here in New York. But either way, the timeline is similar. So, man, I mean, people out there listening, it's like, man, you never know. You know, you could be standing next to somebody. Y'all could have that connection. And y'all could just take it to the next level, man. Man, that's so true, though, man. That's so true. And I think that, you know, that's a powerful story. I think it says a lot about us, you know, and as well as our moms, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. like the fact that, you know, it's, it's not easy to, to raise a, like turn a boy into a man, you know, mm-hmm. then like, maybe we had them there, maybe we got to see them or whatever, but mm-hmm. like, you know, you hitting 13 years old, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, like those years is rough. Right. You know, like when you were a boy, you're dealing with a lot of stuff, you know, puberty just coming on and you don't have no man there to kind of, you know, be like, this is what you need to do. Or if it isn't, man, it's not your daddy. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, exactly. so, exactly. you know, it's, man, I think that says a lot about us, though, the fact that, you know, we kept going and like even that vision that was instilled into us, maybe by our pops, you know what I'm saying? Where it's like, we could see someone that was successful. So it's like, and we know that we came from that person to see success right. and know you came from that it's like you don't feel like you can settle for anything less than that for real yeah 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 that's so true, weird man true. it's crazy it's crazy but man congrats on our first deal that 8k deal so man for people you know well first of all before i get into the whole basics of wholesaling and how somebody that doesn't know anything about it um could get into the game but but yeah. before that, I was going to say, after that first deal of 8000 you know, through the Google ad, so that's obviously one way for the people out there to be, you know, listening to to get on, like I said, on your technology game, learn about Google ads and learn about Facebook ads and all this other stuff. Um, but right after that deal, though, you know, what did you think about the 8K and how are you going to invest that and how you, what are you going to do with that? And what happened to wholesaling right after that, too? Man, great question. Great question. Yeah, so I'm not yeah. going to lie. I'm super far from perfect when it came to starting off. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I got that eight racks, it was like, okay, I got like 3500 that I need to pay back right away because, you know, I'm leaning, I'm, I'm leaning on people at that moment, though. That's what I'm saying. Like, so, like, you know, I got, you know, I got credit card debt and stuff like that. And, you know, leaning on mom and, and big sus and things like that or whatever to kind of get by before, uh, you know, the deal actually went through or whatever. So from the time that I found it, right, so I found it, um, I would probably say like maybe two weeks after my my client passed away, right? But then it ended up closing for like a whole eight weeks after that. It took a long time. So I'm mm-hmm. leaning on people heavily during that time. So, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of that income went to kind of getting back whole, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Kind of not owing people all of this money. Mm-hmm. Got rid of that debt. The rest of what was left is like, you know, 4,500, 4,000, something like that. You know, I put mm-hmm. about half of that right back into the business as far as like being able to bring some people on. So I started that real early in the process, bringing people on, just for the record. Uh, some people don't, you know, recommend that or whatever. I probably wouldn't recommend it now that I'm thinking about it because it didn't go perfect. It didn't go perfect. So it's like, you know, I end up, you know, saving a little bit of that cash for myself, putting a little bit back you know, towards the business, I say like 25% towards the business and like 50% went to just getting whole, just to getting right back, you know what I'm saying? Just trying to get back into the game, get some of that debt paid off. Right. Now, yeah. after that, like after, you know, after that first deal, things 
it was like a little hit or miss. You know what I'm saying? It was like I was here, mm-hmm. I was there. You know, some days I'm putting in effort. It's like, you know, once you get that that 8,000, this is what I would strongly encourage people to. Like, if y'all listening to this, don't start slacking just because you got a check. You know, even like, you know, you go to work every day, you're not going to stop going to work because you got a thousand dollar check or something like that. Like you're going to keep going to work every day. So when you got a business, no one cares whether you go to work or not when you got a business. And the only person who's struggling is you and your family. The only people that's Mm -hmm. hungry is you and your family. So it's like, you got to get out here and put in this work and be consistent. And so I would say like over like the next six to eight months after that first deal, um, you know, I think I closed like another three or four deals But it was like, you know, I'm getting them like every couple months type thing, you know, and I wanted to be more consistent. And it was right around that time that, you know, I started looking into new mentors, essentially. I started Mm. looking into more people to work with. I'm learning new things and whatnot. You know, and I actually, that was right around the time that I actually started helping other people as well. It was like Mm. real close, like closer to that. You know, I had done probably like four or five deals already, Mm. right? I go out to a REI meeting. You know, I'm letting people know, oh, yeah, you know, I've gotten some deals, da 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 This guy, Brian, asked me to coach him or whatever, right? Mm. And that's, that really changed the game for me as far as, like, me expanding my brain. I'm like, oh, damn, I never even thought about that. So from the coaching, I kind of started learning a lot more, too, you know? So it's like I was trying to make myself better for other people. So, you know, I started Man. learning more stuff. I started implementing these things and telling, like, yeah, go implement this, da 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 Brian still to this day is like literally one of my most successful people I've ever worked with. He's able to put his entire, like all his kids through college and stuff like wow. that. Just off cool selling, just off real estate, damn. just off being out here in the field. Yeah, man. I'm like super proud of him, man. So um, yeah, man, that's kind of how it went though. I don't want to, you know, like keep going like too, too long winded or whatever. But. I mean, I mean, no, I mean, that's, whew, that's beautiful. Well, first of all, congratulations to, to him, but it's, it's because of you, you put that, that, that ball in his hand for him to, just go crazy right so so i mean when you talk about <laughs> this guy right here i mean you know let me just tell y'all for everybody watching people like ed you're not going to see people like that all the time it's not a commonality right because this guy like i said he has the business acumen he has the natural entrepreneurship um in him right so whatever business or industry he gets into he's going to eventually t- try to ex- like he said expand his whole situation 360 so you got in the whole feeling, which is really an entrepreneur's game. You know what I'm saying? If you don't hustle, then you're not going to see the work out of it. Everybody should know that by now. But he eventually translated that into coaching. Do you, do you guys understand what I'm saying right now? Like you get into an industry or any type of situation and you see how you can expand your game. That's how you take everything to the next level. And we're going to talk about even way more. We're going to talk about so many different things you, you, you did to implement in your situation and take everything you're doing right now to the, to the next level. But even going back to just the entrepreneurship part of it, um, you close that first deal. And, 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 and two things I want to say. Well, first of all, you close that first deal and you already crushed it down to a certain amount because you already know for taxes and other purposes and other things you got going on you already crushed that number down to a number where it's like this is what i really have to work with right and for all you people watching this right now this is this is exact steps because my second thing i was going to say is a lot of these things we watch podcasts interviews um tv shows whatever you know what i'm saying when it comes to real estate or business or whatever is a lot of different steps missing there's steps missing and a lot of people don't want to address that or they just, it just goes over their head. Like, I'm not going to name any names, but there's podcasts I watch on the daily, on the weekly. People come on there, they talk about, you know, they're making like $2 million a year and, and doing these many houses and rentals and all this other stuff, but they're not, they don't say what happened after the first deal. They don't say what happened after the second deal. They don't say what happened. What are the intricacies that happened after each little situation that, okay, well, what did you do? What did you not do? They just go to straight to when it was just all good and gravy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So what me, I, I'm I'm with I'm not with the fluff. Like that's what that's what my uh uh angle is gonna be. So the way how you just broke it broke it down, that's exactly what I'm looking for because these people, that's what they want. You know, it's like exactly. what did you do to get to that first deal and right after? You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And what you did with the money. So, like you just said again, after that first deal. 
You took the money, you funneled it right back into your business into the first exact way how you found the deal, which was through Google, which was through ads. So mm -hmm. all of you people are out there paying thousands of dollars uh, and you know, just for just for just some basic steps. I mean, literally, Ed is telling you right now exactly how he did it. So I don't want to hear any excuses. And second of all, like you said, he is a coach. So and like I said, all the contact info is going to be below if you want to be coached, you know, right way, the long way, <laughs> like my boy Ed would say, all his contact info is going to be below. So I love the breakdown. This is exactly what I was looking for, you know, and this is not scripted or anything. So that's a, this is that's how you know this is really my guy because this is natural. And all you people out there, when the, see everything we just talked about in the, in the, in the length of, you know, the past what three to four minutes is literally, it, it literally works for any industry, because you have to have money management, you have to have mindset, and you have to know how can I expand my position in any situation I'm in. If you take those three things and you and you try to innovate yourself within those three categories, I guarantee you'll be successful in any category for people out there watching because you know us as us as a people you know and i'm you know i would never you know really try to generalize but us as a people we we unfortunately look for a lot of excuses all right so people like me and you we could still watch a podcast or interview keep in mind where somebody skips through steps and they don't really say their whole blueprint and that could be for a multitude of reasons but people like me and you and, and, and a lot of other people watching we could fill those voids by ourselves anyway. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? We're gonna we're gonna figure it out anyway, and that's what you did. That's what you did. You you, you didn't have the whole hundred percent blueprint to wholesaling, but how did you get your first deal? You see what I'm saying? So yeah. for people out there, yeah, for people out there watching, there's really um, I'm not gonna say it's not an excuse, but find what you can, work on what you can, and make it happen. Facts, man. No excuses. You know, yeah. like I noticed that like one of the biggest things that most people do is that they just, they don't have enough vision. So they can't see it, right? So I feel like, I feel like that's part of my purpose is mm -hmm. to, to be that vision for people. They're like, oh, okay, he's black, he's successful, he's living where I wanna live, he's driving what I wanna drive. Mm -hmm. I, let me learn what he's doing, how he got there, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not even about the glitz and glamor and stuff like that. You see me, I'm out here white teed out. I purposely make yeah. sure I don't style on them at all. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't want people to fall in love with all of my things, fall in love with my drive, with my desire, with my determination to keep going, that willpower to not stop. So it's not like, don't fall in love with the goals, I literally have that written right up here on my board. Like literally, I gotta show you this. Like I literally yeah, have yeah, this. Yeah, let the people see it. Let the people see the motivation, man. It's not a game out here. Don't focus on your goals, focus on your activities. Mm. Every mm. single day, I'm reading that. Every single day, mm. I'm looking at that because that's my, my true core. You know, I don't want mm. people to focus on the dollar signs and oh, you know, I'm gonna get X amount of deals and that. No, focus, like fall in love with the processes that get you that stuff. Fall in love with cold calling, fall in love with text messaging, fall in love with door knocking and working hard, staying up late, waking up early, fall in love with that. And it's like, you literally, you just can't lose. Even if you wanted to, you can't lose because you have fallen in love with the activities that produce the results. You feel me? You can't mm -hmm. fall in love with the results. Fall in love with the activities. You feel me? Man, you 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 got me. You got me like this right now. Like I'm in the <laughs> church. <bro. laughs> yeah, I swear, bro. I'm in the zone over yeah. here, bro. Like I'm so yeah. serious, yeah, for real. Yeah, 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 yeah. And for full for full transparency, because you know me and Ed, like I said, we come from the same background a little bit. And for full transparency, me, I'm I'm in a wholesale as well. I actually just got back into it uh, around maybe what six months ago now. So it's funny because how I, I almost got my first deal. I haven't closed any deals yet for full transparency, <laughs> but I just want to let the people know how I how I actually um, almost got my first deal. So what I did was I went on a website called propstream.com, right? And propstream.com is uh, I think Ed put me on or or some one of the one of these you know, I found it some way, but it's basically a, a website where you can pull lists of motivated sellers. So basically sellers who need to sell their property in a certain amount of time, they have a certain situation and they need to sell. So 
uh, there's systems out there that pull these contact, uh, pull the contact information of these people, and you can actually buy a list or, or certain types of lists from a website like that. So I went on promstreet.com. I bought a few lists in a specific area, which was uh, the uh, St. Louis um, area. So shout out to everybody in St. Louis. Um, I'm mm -hmm. actually looking at some trucks out there. Um, we're gonna talk about all different types of businesses. But anyway, <laughs> I uh, got some uh, some lists from out there and actually got contacted from a few people. But um, you know, and we're gonna talk about uh, in terms of how to analyze a deal and you know if a deal works or it doesn't. But I got. Uh, basically two sellers out of that whole list that really, really, uh, the deal will work um, for, for them. And they actually had, uh, was actually, I'm sorry, one seller, but he had five properties in St. Wow. Louis and he wanted to sell all of them as a package. And only two of those actually I could find a buyer for. You see what I'm saying? So I actually had a buyer, but then uh, what happened was uh, the buyer and his assistant actually drove by one of the properties, one out of the two properties, and they said that it was more uh, it was more beat up and it needed more work than anticipated. So they actually came back to me and said, well, we could only go for one of the properties. And the seller was actually looking for a certain price point because, you know, like I said, they were in a certain situation and they were looking for a certain number, which was 35000 And mm. that only... Um, that one house that they wanted, the buyer wanted, was only about maybe, oh man, it's been a minute now, maybe only like fifteen to 18000 So when I came back to the buyer, I related back to him. I mean, related back to the seller. They didn't, they, you know, that wasn't the number they were looking for. So the deal eventually fell through. And I'm like, man, I could have made like a, a quick 10 to 15K on one deal. So that's my situation. <laughs> and, and um, I mean, but at the same time, you know, for people like me and Ed and all you hustlers and entrepreneurs out there, let me know, like, man, this is real. You know, this is real and it's possible and it's out there. Like, I literally could have had a 10 to 15K uh, check or wire transfer, you know, with the closing or whatever, literally mm -hmm. in my bank account. You know, so I'm not, I'm not stopping. But, you know, obviously, you know, it's a lot going on right now with the virus and everything like that. But wholesaling yeah. and it is, is definitely something that is not to be played with you know it's definitely a serious business um we're going to talk about you know different little things um you know within the industry that can uh you know potentially you know stop or like kind of slow us down in some ways but for full transparency that's exactly how i almost got to my deal um and that's another thing again you see people don't when they describe their story and when it comes to wholesaling they don't exactly list the sources and how exactly mm -hmm. got the deal and all this other stuff. You know what I mean? I'm not going to yep. name any names, but me and Ed just now literally laid out every single intricacy. Like right now, just off or just off of the, the what we just said, you could get a deal. No excuses. No Straight excuses. Up. Straight you know up. Like for real. And hey, look, and it's more than enough resources out here for you to be able to piece anything together that's not there. I put that on everything. Right. Right, Definitely right. check out my channel, The Wholesale Coach. Don't forget, you know. Exactly. <laughs> Definitely oh, yeah. check oh, out yeah. that Wholesale Coach channel because in all reality, most people aren't going to give you those intricacies like John right. says. That's so true. Most people yeah. just going to give you like that little baseline information yeah. and then they yeah, trying yeah. to upsell you to their $3,000 oh, yeah. course. Oh, yeah. Don't get me oh, wrong. Yeah, I got a course. I coach. Right. I do all that stuff. But right. I put this on everything I love. I give out my absolute best stuff for free. Because at the end of the day, I'm not making these videos for me. I make these videos. Y'all, my, my yeah. YouTube channel has never been monetized at the point of recording this video. <laughs> my mm -hmm. YouTube channel yeah. has literally never been monetized. Which means yeah. that this stuff yeah. is for y'all. I'm making right. these videos for y'all to make sure that y'all actually get it. Because when mm -hmm. I was coming up in the game, it feel like to me that so many people was trying to make that barrier to entry so high. Like they didn't want to give you the real juice that they were using. They were trying to sell you some other program that they can get yeah. some affiliate money from or something oh, yeah. like that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Not oh, yeah. With that. And I'm just not with that. Y'all yeah. check out the podcast and or the YouTube channel. You're just going to see pure value, just free game. Like you can't beat it and you don't have to pay a dollar for it. All you need to do is just hit that like button just like you need to do on this video and or That's podcast. Right. That's right. <laughs> you know, That's right. Continue to see. smash that like button. You dig? You know? <laughs> That's all we oh, ever well. ask. Hit yeah, the like yeah, button. Yeah. Share. Mm -hmm. Comment if you can and just tell yeah, other people.
For real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you know, like I said, like, you know, if I was somebody just like I didn't even know if I didn't know either of us guys, and I was just somebody just looking at the video, I would say, you know what? If 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 Ed has a coaching um program and but they just literally laid out a free game where I could literally get a deal out of this, why wouldn't I go to this guy instead of instead of going to a meeting or like one of these wholesale meetings for like ten thousand or five hundred just to sign up and then another fifty K oh, for uh, for a course, right? Why would I not go to these people right here literally laying out the game for me for free? So like I said, my guy Ed, and, and keep in mind for full transparency again, I was coached by Ed. Mm-hmm. This is what I'm trying to tell you. Six months ago when I got back into the game, I bought a I bought actually bought a list from Ed, a customized list from Ed. And when I got the seller from um uh, well, I actually had a few sellers that I was actually going, you know, I was running the numbers and running the information by Ed, and he was telling me exactly what to do, like, so I don't either waste my time or, um, you know, get into the wrong, you know, type of contract or just, just different little things. And this is why you need coaching, because what we say is literally just what we went through, but there's so many different little steps, just as in any industry of business, because you can't just become a nurse or a doctor. Yes or no, uh, right? You have to go to school. There's, there's a lot of different steps to that point right there to where you at that position. You have to go to school. You have to train yourself. So either way, so, yeah, you know what I mean? So either way, the contact information for my boy uh, Ed will be down in the description below. Uh, and, you know, you can, of course, go, you know, you can even, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you can contact him for a, uh, can, can people contact you for like a consultation first or? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I've actually, cool. I'll, I'll shoot it to you so then it can be below or whatever. But yeah, I've got, I just sped up the process for people that's interested in coaching. I don't even yeah. like pretty much, we just hop on a call. There'll be okay. a link to it. You can just hop directly on my calendar. Let's hop on a call. Let's see if we're an actual good fit for each other because I can't take everybody. A lot of people want to work with me or whatever. So nice. I'm only, I only take people that I genuinely in my heart believe that we'll have a good relationship. And that you'll actually go out there and put in that work. I got to get that vibe that you a hustler for me to want to work with you, to be honest. I love it. Not desperate. Hungry. It's a difference. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, not right. desperate. Hungry. People, oh, I need to get a deal in the next 30 days. I'm be honest with you. You probably need a whole nother field. The wholesaling is probably not for you. Just because, yeah. like, if you desperately need it like that, it just gets further and further away. That's what I noticed. Yeah. People that's thirsty you. and desperate, it just don't work out for them, unfortunately. I hate so. you, I hate you, <laughs> but if you kind of got you. yourself together, you know what I'm saying? You yeah. feel confident that 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 you can provide value because we'll be working together doing these deals. You know, for anybody that's listening or watching, you know, I'll be more than glad to at least hop on a phone call with you and we can kind of check it out for sure, for sure. Excellent. Excellent. So you heard it from him. You heard it from the man himself. You know, you can contact him. Uh, like I, I keep saying for the fifth, sixth time, his contact info is below, and I and I'm gonna put uh, a little bit of his other links as well, like his Facebook and everything. And what I want to also say, man, when it comes to business, when it comes to even things in general, when it comes to communication, man, like we have to we have to talk about that just a little bit because my guy Ed, on whatever platform you hit him on, if it if it's YouTube or Facebook or what you contact him and he's answering you right back away right back and this is what's lacking with so many people in business i mean how are we in business and you're not answering me within a day or within an hour within a couple minutes or like i don't understand that that's so integral and people 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 don't do what they have to do in terms of communication and they sit back and say oh man it's not working or oh man you know there's this person is that person knows you you guys need to brush up on your communication skills, man. Especially if you if you literally in a situation where, you know, business is about to be done or business needs to be done or, you know, a deal or anything. If you're not answering your phone, if you're not texting back, if you're not responsive, what do you really expect? Honestly. True. That's so true. Like I can't I can't overstress the, the importance of communication, to be honest. Like I've got a perfect example, like literally a deal that we just closed on this week, a wholesale real estate deal out here in Chicago, just closed on it this week. The seller, like pretty much had I not been communicating heavily with that seller, we would never have closed on a deal. The deal was worth 16500 That was the assignment fee on it. That's what I'm saying, right? 
But without communication, do you hear what I'm saying? Look, without the communication, though, it would have been a hot zero piece. Because, okay, so literally last day, this guy, so like, like how it goes in Chicago is like, if you owe taxes on a property, then you need to pay off those taxes before like you close on a property, right? Let's just put it like that. It's um, one of those states, yeah. In this particular scenario, his taxes were purchased by someone who was gonna own his property on the 24th of this month if he didn't pay his taxes by the 19th. Let's just put it like that, right? I'm trying to make this mm -hmm. as simple as possible, give you the Cliff mm -hmm. Notes version, but communication was super key. So like, mm -hmm. it was one hour before his bank closed. I'm reaching out to the seller like, man, seller, like, you know, you need to at least grab the checkout, bro. Like, you know, like anything like, you know, because he only, he had like two hours before the tax redemption office closed and one hour before the bank closed. So I'm talking to him, it's like, I'm like, bro, like, yeah, you know, you probably want to go ahead and knock that out. Otherwise, you're not even going to have a property to sell because Chicago closed down <laughs> the tax redemption office indefinitely mm. that same Thursday. Wow, wow. So it was like, it was so important to communicate just in general. I'm just using this like a, a general scenario or whatever, but communication is key. Had I not already built up that rapport with him, First of all, like he wouldn't have went to the bank and just took the check out. That's why I was like, just take it out. And then you still got another hour. You don't necessarily have to spend it, but at least take it out. And let's just see what happens. I'll reach out to the buyer. I'll see if I can get confirmation because he was a little skittish on whether the buyers were actually going to close within the next day or two. So I was like, look, I'll, I'm going to like, I'm talking to him. I'm like, look, I'm about to reach out to the buyers. I'm about to find out right now. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get confirmation for you. So don't even worry. And he ends up getting out. He gets that check ten minutes before the bank closes. Like literally, it was probably like six minutes left before they actually closed. Wow, and then wow, he's wow. like right down the street from the tax redemption office. I call my JV partner. I'm like, yo, like we need to know for sure that that, that you know the buyers are gonna be buying. He wants confirmation. Da 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 da. I got him to get the check out, but he don't want to pay until he got confirmation. Boom, I get off the phone with my JV partner. Shout out to Idris for being a, a, a quality, superior JV partner out here. Got to give him his credit on that. Um, but, yeah. you know, from there, I'm reaching back out to the seller. I'm like, yo, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm waiting to get confirmation right now. Don't, don't, don't freak out. Da, 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 da. You back at the tax redemption office? Okay, perfect. All right, look, I just got a screenshot. Here's some screenshots right here. I sent him over the screenshots, show him that the, the buyer just said that they're definitely going to be closing within the next day or two. It was literally wow. like 10 minutes before the tax redemption office closed. I ended up getting on the phone with the seller and his wife. Like, yo, like, it's not going to be a house to sell in like 10 minutes. We need to knock this out. The offices are going to be closed indefinitely. We don't know when they coming back on. It's like you literally just going to end up losing out on this whole property for no reason at all. So anyway, that was like a whole pressure cooker situation that we was in this week, literally. And without heavy communication, it would right. not have went through. Right. Like, right. Communication is key, man. It's key. It's key. It's key. So, man, I mean, you see, you talk about communication, it's almost like I just talked about literally how, how, how important communication is. And that's how you close your last deal. Exactly. Like this is this is exactly what I'm talking about. Everything we're talking about, you can implement it in your life and business, period. For real, man. For real. It's like, you gotta be, and then that's, oh, man, I gotta mention this just real quick. Like, so many people, when we talk about communication, right, like, so many people are just scared to talk. Just scared. Right. Just scared. Like, yeah. like, somebody gonna come through the phone and choke you out or something. Like, so many people are just scared to, to, to talk, to communicate, to, like, express their opinions, and I feel like that's what holds a lot of people that's just getting started in this business back. You know, you may be listening to the podcast. Maybe you're, you know, you've never thought about real estate before. You know, maybe you're in food service. Maybe you're a nurse, whatever it may be. But you're listening to us talking. And it just sounds like, oh, well, I could never do anything like that. Like, I don't know anything about that. You know, I could never have those types of conversations. But I promise you, it's just like confidence is like the magic elixir to everything. So, but like, it comes out through our words. Like when we communicate confidently it, it builds up trust in the other person that's actually listening to us but when you're talking and like you're right. scared and like then it's like it messes up your communication so i think confidence yeah drastically affects your level of communication let's put it like that yes 
Yes, completely, completely agree with you, man. I couldn't agree with you more. And speaking of, <laughs> this is my guy right here, man. This is my guy for people that don't know, man, don't know already. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, we out here. We definitely out here. You see my, you see my guy Ed. And and speaking of speaking of saying we out here, <laughs> uh, when you talk about vision and hustle and and all of these things when it comes to you know just business and life, man, I want to get into the next part, which is. Because you know, someone, someone like you, and someone like me, is of course, we always have something cooking up, man. So, yeah. with the with the whole with the wholesaling, you just closed your last deal. So obviously, people know that you're still very much active in wholesaling, very much active in real estate. Mm-hmm. But what are the next ventures you got going on, or the next ventures you want to start up on? Do you want to you want to touch upon that a little bit? Yeah, hey, I would love to. To be honest. <laughs> I may have yeah. to say some of the juice, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to oh, create man. too much yeah, yeah. out here. You know, this podcast is going to blow up or something, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, you know, right, right. Oh, I yeah. Do want to put See, you they, they, they can save that. They can save that for a coaching call. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> right, there you go. Right, exactly. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah, so, yeah. I've got a few different things that I'm really, really, I'm feeling super passionate about right now. Um, One of those things is I want to get into business development, right? So right now, I guess you can kind of say I'm kind of doing that already, right? To a certain degree, because I'm helping people build out their real estate businesses, right? So that's biz dev. It's just like local to, you know, uh, real estate, right? So Mm-hmm. What I really want to do is that I want to be able to help people in all different industries be able to build out successful businesses. Because, you know, I've been in home health care to digital marketing to real estate now. And, you know, I've helped mm-hmm. loan people and all time. It's like I've helped so many people and done so many different industries myself. It's like I should probably be expanding like who I'm trying to help and what I'm trying to help them do. So business development is something that I'm like, super mm. interested in like uh eager to dive into coming up real mm. soon actually i'm working on it mm. right now and like mm. with that mm. business mm. development um i guess like the approach that i want to take to kind of like generate traffic or like get people to realize who i am in this space is that mm. i'm actually thinking about starting up a brand new podcast um you know i already have the wholesale and mastermind which we got over like 60 something thousand uh listens already something like that or whatever Mm. but i'm gonna be starting up a brand new podcast and or youtube channel where i have on some of the most successful people in america coming on like business owners uh preferably let's put it like that like business owners even ceos and stuff like that maybe even but business owners specifically who have stood the test of time and started very, very, very successful businesses and like politicians, like people in power, people who are doing things that people in our community need to do. You know what I'm saying? Like we need to be in power. We need to like own gas stations and the liquor store if it's going to be in our community and like the hair salon and, you know, like the, the beauty shop and all of that stuff. Like we should own our own stuff. So I want to have some of the most successful people in all of America come on to my podcast and talk about how they built those special businesses. Mm -hmm. For real. And like, you know, if you're a politician, how did you become a politician? What do we need to do to get into politics? Mm -hmm. You know, like, okay, how did you build this beauty supply? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Excuse me. Like, what do we need to do to get the supply necessary to actually stuff our shelves? Things like that. You get what I'm saying? Exactly. Exactly. No, I mean that sounds like <laughs> man. <laughs> nah, yeah, that's that's a hell of a call right there. But anyway, um, <laughs> nah, but um, yeah, no, that sounds dope. That sounds dope. And shout out to um, you know, podcasts like um, Earn Your Leisure and things like that. They they're really changing the platform, really changing the game. But I think we could definitely change the game a hundred. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. We could, but we could change the game a hundredfold if we all we're on that same type of time. If we were all doing the same thing, you see what I'm saying? So if there's less of the BS and the drama and all the stuff that's holding us down, and it's uh, more of exactly like what you just said, like business development, you know, what we need to do within our own community to innovate and build and 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 inspire. If we could do like 
instead of like 35 percent or even like 15 percent to be honest like if we could take that up to like 50 percent 60 percent yeah that's yeah. it Make, that mm-hmm. makes a big difference for yeah. real man yeah. it really yeah. really makes a big difference i feel like like i said earlier like vision a lot of people just yeah. don't have vision they don't see it it's not their fault that they don't have vision right. in my opinion I feel like I'm super blessed. I saw successful entrepreneurship yeah. as a kid. Early on. And then when yeah. I got older, you know, I saw more successful entrepreneurs. I was right around them and they was teaching me and giving me all of the knowledge and stuff. So not all of us have that. Like I'm right. blessed to have right. that. That's why I'm literally being that person for other people. Like I want to be that inspiration. I want to be that, hey, bro, here's this book that you need to check mm-hmm. out. Here's this piece of knowledge. Watch this video. Do this, do that. Like, that's what I had. I'm blessed. It's not, you know what I'm saying? I didn't get here randomly or whatever. You need a roadmap. Let's just keep it at 100, you know? I feel the same way. I feel the same way. Speaking of, speaking of we talked about uh, offline Anchor, the app that you, of course, have your podcast on. I will be putting a link to that. I will be starting my own podcast on Anchor as well. But you are the anchor for other people. That's how I feel as well, bro. And you see, it's like you gotta be, you know, <laughs> for real, man. I feel like you gotta be an anchor, man. Like you gotta be able to hold people down, let people know, like, look, somebody, like one of us out here, we doing it. We are gonna make sure that the rest of us get here too. Like I feel right. like that's super important because I feel like most people, especially from Chicago, it's kind of sad to say, it's like most people who come up here, they just leave. I'm leaving too. Damn, that's kind of messed up. But like, <laughs> I just realized that. Like I'm leaving. But it's like most people leave, yeah. but they don't do. Thing for the city after that or whatever they never come back yeah. you got certain people like common like certain people are like they hear still you know and like we rock with yeah. them super hard but it's a lot of other people like kanye and chief keith and you know what i'm saying like yeah. they have the opportunities to do super special stuff here and they just kind of left you know they just went yeah. to cali yeah. never came back and never heard of them again that's how it feels yeah. but yeah. Yeah. you know i kind of i'm leaving to it whatever but i feel like you know, I feel like it's important for me to, to know that I've kind of left the legacy here in Chicago, you know, like, like, you know, I've helped so many different investors, so many sellers, wholesalers, you know, I feel like I've, I've kind of left, you know what I'm saying, something in the ground here. And, you know, it's not like I'm going to be gone forever or something, either, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. for real. I mean, I, I definitely hear you saying, and, you know, it kind of comes to the point where uh, when, you, when you talk about people leaving, and of course, it happens, you know, here in Brooklyn as well. Um, I mean, when people leave, it's almost, it kind of talks to that psychological, uh, effects, you know, that, that comes with, you know, growing up in a certain area and not wanting to be in a certain environment for a consistent amount of time. And once you get that opportunity, you bounce, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of people see that like, oh man, why you gonna be in the hood? Why you don't come back to us? Like psychologically, when you've been in a certain mind state, like and and physical state for such a long time, you don't want to be in that anymore so i think i think as a, as a community we have to be more understanding well i think as other communities looking in they have to be more understanding as well of, of people that's leaving and trying to do other things but maybe they do come back maybe it's not on a regular basis but it's because of what they've been through you know all the trauma all the ptsd i mean we could go on and on about what we go through literally in our community every day so it's not like we just really yeah Right. You know, it's not like we just doing anything for nothing. Like these, there are so many, there's so much history and hurt and abuse and mental, uh, uh, psychiatry behind that. It's like, it's, you have to understand that. Yeah. You know, simple that, is. as that. You have to understand that. So. And your environment is like super, super important. So it's like, if you were in a certain environment, like for me, one thing about Chicago lately for me is that it's just been, super cloudy man like i feel like i'm rarely seeing sun out here it's like literally Mm. like every single day is cloudy i've seen Mm. the sun maybe five six days this year it feels like Mm. that's depressing i don't know (laughs) yeah and now i could be tripping on that or whatever but i swear to you bro like that's what it feels like at least like it's so little sun that i'm headed to the west coast (laughs) to find me in nevada somewhere sitting in the sun you know (laughs) no cloud that's a, that's my next oh, move, bro. That's why I'm headed to oh, MZ. Catch oh, me at MZ. I'm about to be there oh, real soon. Man. So you guys that you know it. Y'all coming out to Vegas to get it popping on the strip. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes. Wow. 
Come holla at your boy as well. You know what I'm saying? That's a two for one. You made the move. You feel me? So. <laughs> you made the move. You made the move. So I'm going to a tourist location now. You know, like right. Chicago's nice, right. but no one's trying to stop here. Like, nah, right. like, we fly right on over Chicago. Right, we right, don't want right, to be right. back. So, you know. Right, right. <laughs> you actually want to go there, you know? <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> so that's part of it. But yeah, crazy. Man. Wow. I'm, I'm proud of you, man. Congrats on the move, man. That's crazy, you, man. man. Every, Appreciate it. For everybody that didn't know, you you had us in a you had us in a jiffy. They're like, where is you making a move to? <laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah. It's official, man. So it's it's yeah, official. Yeah. On this podcast, it's happening. It's it, it it is Nevada. But anyone that's wondering, I'm sure some of you guys are probably wondering why I was moving. So yeah. Man, that's that's dope, that. man. That's dope. That's dope. I mean, I'm pretty sure for somebody <laughs> like you, there's going to be so many different opportunities out there to even take it to the next level, like things that you didn't even think about, you know, and that's, and that's how life works. You know what I'm saying? You get into a different environment or a different situation, you never know. You can just end up being a multi-millionaire or for something you didn't even, you didn't even go into the process thinking of. Yeah, bro. I'm I'm really, 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 really looking forward to it. I'm not even gonna lie, like just for a change of environment. I've lived, I was, you know, born and raised in pretty much Chicago in the suburbs my entire life, bro. You know, I'm 30. So, you know, it's like it's time to go. It's time to go. Yeah, you know, time. you don't want to stay in one place forever. You know what I'm saying? Ain't hey. nothing wrong with Chicago. Yeah, it's hey. a lot wrong with Chicago. Don't get me wrong. But yeah. it's like it's beautiful though. I'm not gonna lie. Like I love like downtown Chicago to me yeah, personally. I heard beautiful place on the planet mm. i haven't actually been to new york downtown you know <laughs> like yeah 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 but i've seen it i know it's beautiful but right. as far as like what my eyes have actually seen like nothing compares to chicago it's like the most beautiful place on the planet for real but sometimes you got to keep it moving you know it's not going nowhere i can always fly back right i'm a citizen of the universe <laughs> a citizen of the world you know what i'm saying i'm, I'm everywhere bro Man, that's dope. That's dope, bro. Oh, my, my bad. My, 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 my um, actually, uh, my AirPods died. Can you still hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, cool, 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 cool. Mine died yeah, too. yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to take you up on. A, I don't know if this downtown Chicago is, is, is looks better than downtown Manhattan. Well, it probably does right now because <laughs> of the virus and everything like that. Yeah, man. But, um, hey, I'm probably but, gonna man. I was just gonna say, you know, um, I just want to say, you know, well, first of all, it's been a wonderful interview, and you know, first of all. We have so much content that is going to take way more than just one episode. So I'm definitely have our man Ed on here. He's going to be like a regular guest, like how Vlad TV has regular guests on his on his you know, bro, you know I swear saying? to but, God, I'm so glad. Oh yeah, of course, of course, you of course. already know. So coming back. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> for real, for real. I, I just want to see. I just want to, uh, to just to leave off with the people, um, for people out there watching, like, you know. At this point, you know, with the virus and just how everything is in real estate and everything, how would you, or what would you tell somebody who wants to get in the game and they want to close their first wholesale deal or they want to, you know, get in the real estate? Yeah, hey, man, great question, bro. I mean, honestly, you know, it's kind of funny that you say this because I actually, I literally just answered the same question on my podcast yesterday, actually. I was like... Yeah. How would I get my first deal in 30 days or less if I was just getting started or whatever? But I'll kind of go into it, though, just in general. Like, I'll kind of touch base on that corona as well. You know, like, I think right now, what, what like, I'll give you, I'm about, to, I'm about to break it down for y'all. I'm about to literally give y'all the game right here. This is exactly what you need to be doing if you're trying to get your first deal. Next 30 days or not, you know what I'm saying? But let's just, let's just get, okay. go to it or whatever. So... First things first, John. Take notes, people. Take notes. Yeah, yeah. Definitely take notes. So yeah. first things yeah. first, John mentioned it earlier, prop strength. P-R-O-P mm -hmm. string, like water string. Okay, check out prop string. Mm -hmm. With prop string, you'll be able to pull up to 10,000 leads every single month. So that's buyers, sellers, pretty much everybody that we need to get these deals. You've got them right there, up to 10,000 of them, which is more than enough. From there, now, if you can't afford prop string, that's $99 a month. Some of y'all out there like, yo, I'm broke. I'm hurting. I can barely even wipe my ass. This corona shit is going around. I don't have no money. I understand. Okay. So for you all that don't have right. money, county data. Check out your free local county sites. A lot of times you can find this information online. You would be so 
shocked at how much information you can get online. Like right now, if you're in Chicago and you listen to this, you can literally Google Chicago tax delinquent list. It's going to be right there. You can literally mm. Google like code violation list, like pre foreclosures list, probate leads, all of these leads. A lot of times all across the nation, you get this stuff for free. The probate lead list, code violation list, the best and most sought after lists are absolutely free. So check out county data if you can't afford PropStrat. Right outside of that, now that you've got these leads, you need phone numbers. So if you got the bread, I recommend Data Finder, D A T A Finder. Okay, so like F I N D E R, just want to make sure y'all understand what I'm saying, just in case. But Data Finder, that's $250 a month. It's a little pricey, right? But with that $250 a month, you're going to be able to skip trace 15,000 leads every single month for that small cost of 250 versus like 1,500, three grand that you would have paid if you went with another service. All right, so that's the cheapest one that you can get. Outside of that, now, if you broke, you definitely can't afford the data finder, so that's a no-go. So out for you all, if you don't have it, check out truepeoplesearch.com and fastpeoplesearch.com. T-R-U-E, people search, and fast, F-A-S-T, peoplesearch.com. Check out those two sites if you don't have no money. It's going to give you the contact information. All you're going to need is the owner's, uh, what you're going to need is the owner's address and preferably their name. If you have those two pieces of information, you're golden. If you're getting county data or data from PropStream, you got that. You're good to go. So now you've got the, you got the leads and you got their phone numbers. Now guess what you need to do? start busting down those phone calls it's not a game so especially for the people that like if you don't have a budget you just from right there hop on phone calls right there that's pretty much your only option get on the phone it's going to be manual right there on your cell phone you got to dial all the phone numbers in but get it don't let nobody stop you i'm seeing people have to make 1500 manual phone calls for them to get their first deal but it paid off for them and now they're out there getting consistent deals because now their business is paying for itself now, if you've got the bread, call tools. That's another service that I'm going to recommend for you. That's an automatic dialer program. All right. So with call tools, C-A-L-L-T-O-O-L-S, like tools like hammer, uh, with call tools, what I like about it is that it's going to allow you to scrub your list against the do not call list. So you're not calling people that's on the do not call. Now, if you don't have the bread for something like this, like I said, you just need to pick up the phone and start calling. People start, oh, I'm on the do not call. Hang up on them and just go to the next one. We gone. You know what I'm saying? We're not playing no games. But if you do have the bread, go ahead and get call tools. You're going to be able to make nearly a 1,000 calls a day, solo, dolo, by yourself. All right? So that's what you want to be doing if you got call tools. And then last but not least, textedly, text messaging. You want to start text messaging people as well. So like for $50 a month, you could check out this program that I love called Texted Lead. Like I texted you with an L-Y at the end. So Texted Lead, for 50 bucks, they're going to give you 3,500 text messages that you can send out. You can receive them as well, but you're only going to get charged for the ones that you sent out. Right. And if you sign up using my referral code, you're going to get an extra 5,000 texts too. So that's a come up in the world. So... <laughs> You might want to look into that, but that's pretty much it, though, guys. You got to be out here working. That's the best advice that I can give to y'all. Even if y'all don't know what to do, get out there and start doing it. I don't even care. I'd rather have you doing something than nothing. Do something, even if it's wrong. Like, just do something. Like, start taking action towards these goals. Listen to this podcast over if you got to. Rewind it a little bit and go back over what I just said. Check out YouTube videos, stuff like that. But most importantly... Don't just sit at home and just turn yourself into some type of information consuming box. Get out here and start taking action for real. So don't focus on the goals, focus on the activities. Get out here, right. start taking action, start running towards right. those goals. They right there for y'all. They like that. <laughs> man, man, I mean, oh man, this is my guy right here. You <laughs> see, every, <laughs> everything you just game, said. Bro. I have to give him the whole oh, game. Man. <laughs> Man, and this is what the people. This is what the people want. This is what they need. When you talk about free game, you talk about business development, personal development, uh, vision, trying to be a visionary, 
improving your mindset, taking action. These are all the, the, the foundational parts of any business. That's it. Facts. That's Facts. it. Facts. That's For it. Real. You know? So listen, man. Oh, man, this has been such a great episode. I really honestly wish, like, we, we, honestly, we could go for hours, man. But we're going to have to, we're going to have to end it right here. We got to end it right here. But guess what? You know, at the end of the day, me and Ed, we both have, well, he has his podcast and YouTube and everything already popping off. I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to get to his level and trying to get, you know, my, my little situation, um, you know, to a, to a higher, uh, to a higher frequency. But all his information will be below his podcast, his YouTube channel, his Facebook, his whatever he, whatever he, he sends to me, I'm going to put it right in the description. So if you're looking for business coaching, if you're looking for coaching uh, in, in terms of real estate, in terms of wholesaling, hit him up. Do not play, but only if you're about your hustle and taking action. That's it. We don't be only want that. You know what I'm saying? And, and honestly, I only want those type of people even listening to the podcast and watching this YouTube right here. Because there's no negativity, there's no none of that. You know, we we go we gonna spank the boots um, if you're not about that. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> but that, like I said, this man right here will be uh, we you will see him soon on my on my channel and on a podcast. So this is just like a uh, well not necessarily a part one, but this is just an episode one. So he will be a frequent um, a member and a guest. So. Uh, next time we will be talking about other things, but for now, take these notes. So watch these video, watch this video right here in terms of business development. Like I just said, coaching, personal development, take action. You literally have all the tools to even close your first deal. And if you need, if you still need help in coaching and training and things like that, I, like I just said, everything will be below. So that's all of that. I mean, do you have any parting words for the people, my man? Man, man, I think, I think. The best thing that I can say to you all is, man, well, first off, bro, you know, definitely I appreciate you having me come on to the podcast, you know, for, yeah. for the inaugural episode, for you know, inaugural, I feel, the first I feel greatness, <laughs> extra gracious yeah. for that, you know, and, you yeah. know, whether y'all, whether y'all been checking out my man, John, for a while, or y'all just finding out about him right now, I'm asking y'all as well, go ahead, hit that like button for my hit man, that John. Like button, man. Hit that like button, man. Hit that like share, subscribe you, you for me, man. <laughs> and the podcast because this right. man gonna be putting out that heat you yeah, already yeah. know so definitely. and plus i'm looking forward to coming back on as well too i'm really yeah. really looking forward yeah, to like definitely. you said bro we could talk for hours so oh, yeah. just just for the audience though guys um you know i appreciate you all checking this out um you know as john said if y'all need any type of you know, business coaching, wholesale coaching. If you're looking to learn a little bit more of this stuff from home, um, you know, I've got the course set up. I got y'all. Reach out to me on social media. Check out my, my group, all of that good stuff. But, you know, the links will be in the description of this podcast. But I think I think that's about it, bro. I think that's, that's about it. About that's it. About it. <laughs> Get out there and take action, y'all. That's the right. best advice. That's how I would love to end it. Just remember, take action action re-listen to this if you got to but get out there and take action that's the only way yeah. that you're gonna be cashing out out here period right 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 definitely definitely and that's 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 it that's how you have it man and that's all of it there's no fluff uh like i said you have all the tools you need i want to see y'all out there i want to hear back from some people watching this like man i took some of the tools and some of the advice i heard from john and ed and i made it happen no yeah not not even only in real estate but just just in general all right, so that's the first episode. And uh, man, it's been great. I will see y'all soon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, till next time. <laughs> 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 <laughs>